Oh my god, so slow. Open targets. Again, moving, not alert. At the squad level, German infantry doctrine was centered around the general purpose machine gun. Now, the left flank covers with the machine gun and the right flank moves inbound. Welcome to History Legends, and in this video, I'll do a step-by-step -step analysis of a short film called Six Minutes of War. But before we start, little introduction. It all started a few days ago when Paralyte Works asked me to react to one of their videos. And they specified to be as real and harsh as necessary. But in all honesty, if they hadn't contacted me for me to react to one of their videos, I would not have done it. Because I feel bad criticizing small movie productions. Especially considering how far they have gotten since their first movie in 2016. Alright, but now let's get to work. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go! So right off the bat, Sturmgewehr, the uniform, the weather, fall 1944. They know the enemy is somewhere in these woods. From the looks of it, we can assume these guys are part of an advanced patrol that has to scout the area from Soviet soldiers. But I feel they're not alert, they're moving targets. Now, I like the fact that they position themselves in a skirmish line and have space between each soldier. But even then, I believe there should be a little bit more space between the troops. However, for the camera work, I understand that they did a good job by putting them close enough, but should be a bit more spread out in reality. <laughs> of course! Oh my god, so slow! Okay, one of your guys gets hit. First reaction, you fall down. And then you can crawl towards the tree or anything that will give you cover. But this guy is stumbling forward a little bit more alertness would be interesting and the soviet machine gun is right in front of them maybe 20 meters away you'll see in a second but this is a soviet light machine gun that has an effective range of 800 meters what is it doing firing so close and you can't tell me he didn't see them coming when you have such a weapon you want to use its range at its full potential all right, he seems to be the squad leader. Oh my god, they just got a guy killed because they walked in that skirmish line. And now, after this encounter, they just go back to the same formation that got them the casualty. And they assume, once the guy's killed, that there's no more Soviet soldiers around. I mean, there was just a big firefight. Do you think surrounding troops will notice that there's something going on? Of course they will! And let's not even go to the topic of what is this lone Soviet light machine gun doing by himself way ahead of his men. And this Soviet guy wasn't even in a foxhole or any defensive position, so there's no point of being there. Now, like I said in the beginning, we have to assume this group is part of a reconnaissance patrol. Usually, these would be groups of 15 to 20 men separated in two squads, which this movie portrays correctly. However, there's one thing that would make this scene way less cinematic and entertaining is that such a battle would never have happened. You see, patrols are the forward element of a bigger unit. Now, even patrols have scouts in front of them to avoid any surprises like the ones we just witnessed. Open targets, again, moving, not alert. Okay. 
I am certain they watched a video of military history visualized about German infantry squad tactics. And I have to admit, this movie shows the relative strength of a German squad of 1944 pretty well. With an MG42 crew at the center of the formation, which is actually what would have happened. At the squad level, German infantry doctrine was centered around the general purpose machine gun, either the MG34 or the MG42, supported by a bunch of soldiers on both flanks. And this is what made Germans so deadly in tactical encounters. Again, alertness, fall down. But we, we can feel the chaos. <laughs> this is so dumb. I cringe every time I watch this scene. Honestly, I stopped quickly, but what is the sniper even doing up there? I actually want to know how many times during World War II snipers went up the trees. So you need a ladder or you need to climb the tree? I believe it would have been more entertaining if the sniper was actually in a foxhole or a small bunker and you don't see him. This would have been nerve wracking. You get shot at and you don't know where it's coming from. Oh my god. <laughs> Was soll das? Two minutes in, it sat the rai, it goes of course. Now I understand the machine gun crew being targeted at first because they're the most powerful in the squad. But let's recap, they just had two guys shot and killed just seconds ago. They should be on maximum alertness. Like I previously mentioned, the machine gun crew is at the center of the skirmish line. It has a long range and extreme firepower. It is not supposed to move. It stays in support while both flanks advance, with the squad commander organizing the movements. As the MG42 covers the advance, one flank moves in leaps. They run 20, 30 meters forward, fall flat, and then while being covered by the right flank and the machine gun. Now, the left flank covers with the machine gun and the right flank moves in bound. And once the infantry is forward, then the machine gun crew takes his equipment, move forward, repositions, and provides cover once again. And then again, the Soviets are so goddamn close. What's the point? Why do they fire once the enemy is literally in front of your eyes? Honestly, it feels like a video game at this point. I remember playing a similar mission, Call of Duty, World at War in the Pacific, where you have soldiers in the trees, little snipers here and there. It's the same mission but in short film type. I mean, the Soviets clearly saw the Germans moving forward 50 meters ahead, but yet they wait at the last moment to react. Ah, come on. And again, where are the other Soviet soldiers? There's no organized defense structure. It's just one level after the other. Mission accomplished, next level. They shouldn't be moving like that, you see? In bounds. And the squad leader shouldn't look left and right. They know the enemy's forward. They have literally zero physical fitness. There's nothing fast and aggressive in their movements, knowing they're in the middle of a battle. We don't see the interaction between the different soldiers. We don't see the squad leader actually thinking of what to do. You're in a stressful situation. You are in command of a group of men. And you know that if you take the wrong decision, they will be killed because of you. So you have to be alert. Now, I have to admit, I'm not the expert. If you have seen combat, please comment below and let us know how 
it was and what you think of this scene. I will gladly read your comments. Alright, finally some orders and communication between the troops. But this front soldier shouldn't look left or right, should look in front. Now they're moving targets again. Should move into bounds, running and cover. And why are these Soviet soldiers just turning their backs like this? Doesn't make any sense. Couldn't they have left before or I don't know. He literally ran into the bullets. This is okay, the scene is okay, but a little bit more faster. Now we hear there's a Soviet machine gun somewhere, but these German soldiers just charge forward. They don't even hold and look where to go. They just go forward. They don't even know how many enemies they're facing. They're part of a little patrol. They don't even know what's facing them. What if they charge into an entire Soviet company? It's the end. I noticed that none of the German soldiers actually picked up the MG42. Now it's just laying in the back. It would have been extremely helpful to have this firepower on the front line. So now they're running a bit slow. Okay, the Soviets know there are Germans there. But look how long it will take for the Germans to do something. 15 seconds. The Soviets don't do anything. They know the Germans were there. Now clean up the rest of the trench. Oh, no. Melodramatic moment. Whoop, end of the mission. Now it's the melodramatic moment when you reach the end of the map. So you saw the Soviets knew they were getting flanked, but did nothing about it. They didn't throw grenades. They didn't even position themselves to expect an attack. They just stood there as target practice. This entire sequence just feels like a game of paintball. Everything is at close range. You see all the guys you're shooting at and you can feel their life is not really on the line. In a way that whenever you hit, you make some noise, you yell, I'm hit, you raise your hand, and then you go back at the end of the map and wait for next round to start. Like I said, the, the adrenaline should be pumped. It's not the moment when you crash. The crash happens later during later that day. Now this scene, I can't believe it. Unbelievable. He gives this wounded Russian soldier some water. Just two minutes earlier, he killed two Soviet soldiers in cold blood that were wounded. He didn't hesitate shooting them. Now there's a wounded soldier in front of him. And oh, now his heart blossomed. He's gonna give him some water. My problem is that it's not very consistent with his character. We feel that he's a bit scared in the battlefield. Uncertain. That's okay. Shoots at everything that moves. Okay. But when he does that the third time, make it consistent. <laughs> All German soldiers here have a uh, Sturmgewehr. The actor in the middle. I, I like him. Feels more realistic. But I don't understand why they leave his squad there. Now the patrol is half strength and I don't know, they go out in the open? I don't know.
And where are his men? He's all alone now. But this scene, this last scene, is actually very interesting because it shows us the structure of this patrol. And I told you at the beginning, 15 to 20 men separated in two squads, and it's exactly that. You see the older man is the sergeant, and he has two squad leaders under his command. But the fact that the patrol separates at the end, I, I don't buy it. Either they all stay in this trench and wait for further reinforcements to hold the position, or they all keep moving forward, but they don't separate like that. Now to wrap up, I understand. It's very easy for me to criticize and review the work of others. So for this reason, I'm going to give you five improvements that I believe could have been interesting. Number one, use actors that are more fit and maybe make them drink a lot of coffee so they're very alert on what's going on. Number two, use the MG properly as supporting fire and not just walking targets. This is very important because if the Soviets come out and start firing, you blast the MG42 and you provide cover to your men and have the soldiers move in leaps. So one group actually runs forward for 30 meters, falls flat, looks for cover and provides supporting fire for the other group to do the same thing. And they move like this. Number three, show actual Soviet resistance and not multiple levels of defense like in a Call of Duty mission. If anyone is interested in German infantry tactics, I highly recommend a book called Instal Gewittern or Storm of Steel in English, written by Ernst Junger. It gives you a very real and detailed perception of what attacking the enemy might have felt like. Number four, five fights taking place at decent ranges, at least 100 to 200 meters. And number five, like I mentioned before, show the two squads of the patrol right away and portray the dynamic between the scared and inexperienced squad leader with glasses with a battle-hardened sergeant. But this was my review. Do you think I'm tripping? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. And let me know in the comment section what other video of Paralyte works do you want me to react to. But again, most of what I'm telling you is either through research, so the links will be in the description, or simply from my veteran's book, The Great Veterans Project. You see, there are 369 war stories dating back from 1800 to today's conflicts, but half the book is about World War II, so you can have a better perspective of how fighting for Americans was, but also how fighting for Germans or the Soviets actually felt like. Link will also be in the description.